slowly restrict. Now we're gonna do one of my favorite techniques, the guillotine from the side mount. It's an underused technique and it works a whole lot different than other guillotines. So let's check it out. So guillotine from side mount. It's a great technique and look usually the path to it leads something like this. So I'm trying to go for paper cutter maybe or whatever reason he's trying to escape which will usually make him turn towards me and try to bring in the knee. And I'll bring my shin on his stomach and now his arm is on, uh, his far side arm is on top of my arm. I would prefer to go for the far side arm bar and for some reason I do not want to. Now his arm is pretty low down on my shoulder, his elbow is in here. Maybe I just think ah, it's, the risk isn't worth it. So this arm blocks my hip, this arm has my arm, which automatically means that there is neck exposure. His neck is completely open. So I'm trying to attack the neck and I'm just gonna grab around and I'm gonna cup the chin. I'm gonna show you afterwards a bit more in detail. And now I'm gonna release that arm, grab my second hand, step over to block the hip and finish the guillotine. Okay, now watch it. When I'm grabbing the chin, I'm cupping it, okay? I do not enter my hand just as deep as I want to. I'm not keeping my hand open either. I'm cupping the chin so I have more control over his head. And the second hand is grabbing the edge of my hand, the bottom of my hand, like so, okay? And now I can roll his arm, his head in, step over the hip, and now the key to finishing the guillotine from side mount is to feel that wrap around the neck. So there's a couple details that I like to put emphasis on and most important is to not crank the neck if you want to finish the guillotine clean. Now, uh, it's not because I think neck cranks are dirty. I love neck cranks because they are dirty, because people hate them and they're very effective. But if I want to choke him, that means what I need to do is that, uh, that that's his neck and it's basically like a hose. And through that hose or through that cable, a couple of small, arteries and veins flow through so all I need to do is compress that hose a tiny bit just enough to restrict the blood flow to and from the brain enough okay I do not even need to stop it completely I just need to restrict it and I don't even need to stop the artery the blood flow to the brain most likely I'm gonna stop the vein, the blood flow from the brain. So when the vein is compressed and the blood cannot um, fall down, cannot flow out of the brain, the blood pressure increases and there is no blood flow anymore in the brain. Okay, so usually that's the mechanic of a choke. And whenever I'm cranking around on the head that means I'm using strength to move his head around and that means that not all of my strength is going into the choke mm. simple as that right so when I have you in a in a guillotine and I'm starting to move like many people are, are here and then they'll be like ah <laughs> yeah now I'm lifting up his body and I'm using a huge amount of strength to lift him so I'm, I don't want to I just want to compress okay now I feel my forearm on his sternocleidomastoideus this, uh, this, uh, this muscle here and under there is his main blood flow so that is here feel my biceps on his neck and now I feel the side of my chest here and I lay a bit on his neck and then compress. There's two main wraps that I can use. Forearm biceps pectoralis 
or forearm biceps latissimus, depending on my position. When his head is in a lot, as usually in the guard, then I use my lats. But here I'm much more frontal, so I use my pectoralis. My hands are on my heart, on my solar plexus, in the middle of my chest, locked, and then I'm just applying pressure. I'm locking my shoulder, pushing the shoulder down, deplete the shoulder plates, and then feel how I compress the neck. I need to develop that feeling. So when I want to, uh, to practice it, to learn it, I need to use as little strength as possible. If I have to use strength while he's not even defending, then how am I going to finish the choke when he is defending, right? So it's all just here. He's trying to come towards me, but most likely he will be some, somewhere around here. So next sticks out, grab it, wrap it, step, choke. Okay? Now I know most people try to go from here to the mount to finish and then something like, ah! And, well, it, it works, kind of. And I think that is mostly due people knowing the guillotine from the guard. So they want to kind of simulate a guard. You're in side mount and you want to go to a, a guard-like position as the mount is. They want to be full frontal. But it has a lot of downsides to it. Most of all, if I don't watch out, I'm flattening myself out. I'm landing on my face. I'm not stable anymore. His neck is a lot more stable now. It's a lot more difficult. And I need to lift my own body in order to try to finish the guillotine. So to me, it's a lot better to stay here on the side. I use that foot to lock his hip. Because yeah, one of his main escapes would just be to flee with the hip. And now you see there's a, a lot less pressure, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So catch the hip, toes pointing away of him, shin upwards, catch it, feel the neck, compress. So easy, so easy. Pap and compress. Really feel the way you grab. And, and you see how he's gonna escape, right? He's gonna either bridge here or try to grab, or most likely he is going to. Turn towards me to escape. Exactly, right? And uh, uh, just look, neck exposure. So easy, boop. And you see, my shoulder is almost at his shoulder. If I have a lot of um, neck open here, it's very difficult. Now I have a bad angle. My wrap needs to be sitting like so. So I have contact on the front of the neck and all the way around. If my forearm is here and my upper arm is here, then I have a bad angle. Then I'm pulling against his jaw, which uh, might be uncomfortable, but he can resist a lot of it. So I need to bring my upper arm, my biceps, down on the base of his skull. Not up here, down. There's even this, this crease, this, this you, you feel it, right? It, it feels like, like a button coming in. There it is. So hop, pack, be tight, bring tight in, shoulder down. You see my arm is 90 degrees to the spine line. It's not rotated, it's really, it's 90 degrees to the spine line. That's really important. I'm very tight, my bicep on his neck, chest coming down. He's feeling now the weight of my chest on his chin. Mm -hmm. And now he will feel my forearm slowly restricting the blood flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't take, doesn't take a lot if you do it right. So that's the side mount guillotine. So that's the guillotine from side mount. Um, it took a bit longer than usual because I know many people like to just muscle through a guillotine. It offers itself as a move where you just muscle through wrap your arm around and then just try to rip off the head and actually that's exactly how I taught it for many years just wrap and just try to actually screw off the head and well it works but it should be the last resort if a clean guillotine doesn't work then I'm gonna try to screw off your head but it 
does work like this with a lot less force, which means it works against heavier opponents, stronger opponents, better opponents, opponents who are resisting a lot more, and it works a lot better if you are tired, if you do not have a lot of strength anymore, which very likely will be the case in a fight uh, at the moment that you get a guillotine, because it's probably going to be a couple minutes in. So try and work on doing the guillotine as clean as possible. Hope you like this variation, hope you enjoyed. Any question it will be answered and any feedback is appreciated. And see you next time.